Hey guys, welcome back to Inchworm Gardens. Today is June 3rd, 2021. I'm here in Tennessee Zone 7. It's a warm 79 degrees and we got a storm of brewing. Today I'm going to be giving you a quick garden tour, show you everything that's growing, and hopefully we can get it done before the rain hits. We've had a lot of rain the past few days, but um, I think the plants have been loving it because everything is growing really well. So let's take a look. All right, so we start with the hops here. This is our Cascade hops. It's growing up nicely. The chickens have been camping out right here, so they're causing a little damage down there, but not too bad. Then we have our Cascade hops growing over here. I did end up putting a string here, which it's starting to grow up, which is helpful. So we're gonna get that guy trained up there as well, and eventually this whole thing will be covered in hops. All right, we have our Scarlet Runner bean. Doing well, putting out a lot of flowers. I haven't seen any actual uh, beans set yet, but um, we're enjoying those nice red flowers. Mint's doing good. Got three different kinds of mint there. Little sunflowers, those are all growing well. These are the Mexican sunflower here. We got our hyacinth bean. We have four of them planted at the base of this trellis. So that's gonna be growing over that. It's getting windy. Got our tomatoes. Lots of tomatoes on the way. All right, here's our greens bed. So these are all our different salad greens, our kales, our lettuce, the tatsoi, everything is starting to flower. The arugula, and check out this blue disc daisy. That's nice. Couple more kales there. All right, here's our wall of peas. We have been eating more peas than, well, I can't say more than we can eat because we've eaten a lot and we're still eating more. But we've had so many um, and they've been delicious. We just harvested a bunch of shelling peas just yesterday, made some, some uh, cooked peas, which was nice. But otherwise, these are just uh, eating fresh, just sitting here, my wife, my son, my two-year-old uh, two daughter, one-year-old daughter, we sit here and we just munch these peas and they're delicious. All right, here we have our butternut squash. This is the ruby, buckwheat ruby, getting some pretty pink flowers. Our sweet corn doing good. So check this out, we're starting to get some tassels here. So corn is cool because it's wind pollinated. So here, watch, I'll give this a little tap. I don't know if you saw it on the camera, but when the wind blows, it drops pollen and the pollen drops onto these little silks. And each one of these silks is connected to a kernel of corn. And so you need every silk to get pollinated uh, in order for the corn to develop correctly. So that's doing good. This is interesting because he's fully open and dropping pollen, but I don't see any silks on this stock yet. But this is why you plant corn close together, because they'll pollinate each other. There's the okra. It's all grown well. I'm still fighting some vole, some burrowing animal, which is causing these holes everywhere. Kind of annoying, but um, only one plant seems to be affected, which is this corn over here in the corner, which I'll show you. But otherwise, it's not a big deal. We got some zinnias growing. All of our carrots. I did thin them a little bit, but they're still planted very close together. So we'll see how that affects the growth. The borage is starting to pop some flower buds. So this is our uh, kohlrabi. So we did harvest our first kohlrabi last week. It was nice, tasted like like kale and celery together. It was pretty good. Uh, we are getting cabbage worms on the kale, or sorry, on the uh, kohlrabi leaves, but 
I'm just leaving them as they are because they're actually kind of acting as a trap crop, meaning all of the worms are on these leaves, which we're, don't, we're not eating these leaves anyway, and they're staying off of our kale, which is over here. So that's working just fine. We're not getting any worms over on our kale leaves. So that works. All right, and there's our glass gem corn and some beets over there. Check out our barley. We're actually getting some little seed heads growing. I forgot what these are called. They have a specific name. But uh, anyway, I'm excited to see this fully mature because it's going to turn black. These little strands are going to turn black. That's pretty cool. There's our first dahlia bulb, our dahlia flower. We've got a ton of dill. Been really enjoying this. Dill is, I think, a real underrated herb. It tastes so nice, grows super easy, super well, and it attracts um, beneficial butterflies and caterpillars, swallowtail butterflies. So that's a really nice one to grow. Purple opal basil, namelo basil, big old lettuce leaf basil. This is our lime basil. This is the cardinal basil, which is going to produce big flowers, but we're not getting any flowers yet. And we have our fennel over here, the green fennel and the bronze fennel. So we've been snacking on all this stuff, adding it to salads, and really enjoying that. The radishes are all going to seed, so you can uh, let radish radishes go to flower, and then after they're done flowering, they turn into these little seed pods, and you can totally eat these. Just pop them off, and you can add these to salads. They have a nice little peppery zing to them, so that's a little trick for you. So I mentioned, I think this guy is getting affected by this stinking animal, with whatever it is that's burrowing. It keeps burrowing right at the base of this corn plant, and it goes underneath the roots, and I think it is starting to affect the growth of this one corn plant. So that's annoying, but we do have several more, and they're growing fine. So we'll still get some good glass gem corn. Oh, I do see one little okra guy there. The Jing Orange. So I'm expecting a lot of okra as well. All right, let's take a look at this tomato wall. Check this out. These guys are all growing real well. Keeping them pruned, keeping them tied up to the stakes. And we are definitely seeing tomato fruit set. I'm really happy with how these tomatoes are growing. Haven't had any issues. All right, some beans. These are the dragon tongue beans. This was a squash plant that I was growing in our compost, transplanted over here, letting that guy go. Let me finish this bed. Some teddy, ba teddy bear sunflowers more beans, and check out these beautiful calendula. This is the strawberry blonde calendula from Baker Creek. It's really nice. And here's our nasturtium. This is a variegated variety. It has that cool kind of cream splashes and these beautiful orange flowers. This whole plant is edible. And I mentioned trap crops earlier. This also acts as a trap crop because it um, attracts aphids is what I read. Now I gotta say I don't have any aphids on this plant. The aphids are on my beans and some strawberries and other places but apparently nasturtium is supposed to attract aphids uh, to keep them away from your other plants. So something to keep in mind. This is our gumphrina. All right let me show you this other bed over here. So this is our cucumbers. We have two, four, six market more, 76 cucumbers planted in this bucket. That's growing really well. And here's our verde um, tomatillo, growing nicely. Check out these peppers. They're all doing good. 
Oh, I wanted to show you this trellis I set up here. First, let me show you, we got a poblano. It's coming along. Okay, so check this out. I added two posts, one here and one at the end. And what I've done is the what's called the Florida weave method. And it's a way of trellising plants, um, or sort of like trellising, but, but securing them so uh, they don't get knocked over. So I've done that for these peppers. And what you do is you just take a string, take one string, and you go on one side of your plant, and then the other side, you kind of snake it around like this, and then you take another string and go back the other way. See how it crisscrosses? And what you're doing is kind of pinning the plant between those two strings. And as the plant grows up, you can add more string and uh, keep it secure that way. Because I mentioned we had a lot of rain, we had a lot of winds as well. And I was looking out the window and seeing these guys just kind of flap around. So I needed to add some sort of um, security measure there. And another, another thing I did is just add like um, a little string. This is our ground cherry, one of our ground cherries. I just tied a string kind of holding the stem to the side of this tomato cage just to help with it swaying too much. And then this pepper plant, which was outside of the outside of the uh, Florida weave set up, I just attached a little string there to there. So that's just something to be aware of, especially if you're in an area that gets high winds, is that your plants can get damaged from high winds. So you do need some sort of staking method to help them with that. So I have had plants fall completely over and crack in half before. All right, here's our little herb circle. We got our uh, moss curled parsley, cilantro, this lemon bee balm, some chives. I've tried about three separate times on this chamomile, but I'm just not getting the chamomile to come up. Or actually, it comes up and then it disappears the next day, so I think something is eating it because it's not there. Lemon balm, thyme, oregano, real dense. And we're still enjoying strawberries pretty much daily. As soon as they're the slightest red, they get picked up by our kids and eaten. Check out this little bunch of tomatoes. This is the mini bell. That sun's coming out, getting a little harsh, but we got a ton of tomatoes on this guy and they're, they're a good size. All right, here's uh, another bed. Got the cinnamon, basil, some zinnia flowers, some the touch-me-not flowers. Our eggplant. Now again, I've mentioned trap crop a couple times. For whatever reason, the flea beetles are loving this eggplant. They are only, they're like exclusively on this eggplant. As you can see, look at this leaf, man, completely eaten through but the flea beetles are staying pretty much on this one plant, so I'm okay with it. I could probably do some sort of spray or something to keep them off, but I'm not. I'm just kind of letting them do their thing, but uh, they're staying here, so that's, that's good. I guess that's why you just want to plant a, a big variety of plants, because I don't know if nature will have more selection, and I don't know, it just works out that way. Plant a variety. That's, that's what is found in the natural world. This system of monocrops is not, not how nature intended it. Anyway, so you can see a bunch of little flea beetles there. But the plant's doing fine. Poppies are getting bigger. Happy to see. Looking forward to some poppy flowers. And check out these ground cherries, man. These are growing so well. And they are all loaded. We've probably eaten about 10 of them so far. They've just been falling, falling here and there to the ground. They are delicious. I cannot wait for the big flush of these that are gonna come on pretty soon. We have a ton of them. 
And this is all the Pruinosa variety of ground cherry. And then I have the Peruviana over here. This is the show and run gold is, is the specific variety. And you can see the difference in the, in the fruit there. I'll be doing a video, another video on ground cherries, but just to give you the overview. There we go, oh yeah. And then these peas are still doing good. And this sunflower is as tall as me. Not quite flowering yet, but standing tall. There you go. That's pretty much the whole garden. There is actually another area that I have not shown in any other videos. It's at the side of my house. I got a couple berry plants over there. I'm gonna show that to you now. So this is the side of our house and I do have some berry plants planted over here. Um, they're getting a little attacked by birds though. This is one of our blueberries. And there was a lot more blueberries on this bush but they're slowly just kind of disappearing. Our blackberries, the late freeze did have a pretty major effect on these blackberries, so they're just tiny, but we are getting some fruit, which is nice. But the real winner of this area, which I am, have really been enjoying, is this raspberry bush. This is called the Double Gold Raspberry, and it is just fruiting like crazy. And these are the most delicious raspberries ever had. They're so sweet, they're so tasty, and there's a ton of them. And it's amazing how fast they ripen. We come out here and we literally pick every single ripe fruit. And then the next day we come out and there's a bunch more fully ripe fruit. Like they ripen very quick. So that is a really, really good one. And then check out these lychee tomatoes. Really pretty flowers. Again, I think some birds are like picking off some of the buds or something which I'm surprised because this plant is loaded with pretty major spikes anyway but but we still are getting some fruit here I got two plants there but I planted this one to the side because as I mentioned it's full of spikes and I don't want my kids getting poked but this is doing pretty well. I'm looking forward to trying those. There you go guys, there's the full garden. Hope you enjoyed that tour. I'll have another update for you soon. Everything is growing so fast, so I'll maybe start doing these a little more frequently. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for following along. I hope your garden is growing well and everything is going well for you in life. Have a great day guys. Talk to you next time.